Hey gamers, what's up? And in today's video, it's going to be very unedited, but I do want to talk about some mistakes that I think players are making when pre-building their Kafka, and also talk about her traces and everything like that. They got it released today. Uh, Hoyoverse basically released all of the big traces she's going to do and kind of set everything in stone for her. The only thing we don't have is the percentages for her, which is, you know, just her scalings as far as damage and stuff goes, which is fine. We really don't need to talk about that right now. That will be talked about when she gets released. And then also we'll talk a little bit about her light cone banner as well because they did announce everything coming up for the light cone banner too. So first, let's go ahead and talk about all of her traces, then we'll talk about the light cone banner, and then we'll talk about the problems being made by players, because I do think knowing about the traces and the light cone is very important before we talk about that. So guys, let's go ahead and talk about the traces first. Her traces, number one, is going to be torture. When the ultimate is used, enemy targets will immediately receive damage from all currently applied DOT sources instead of just receiving damage immediately from the current applied shock state. So this is just really good. Her skill already procs off DOT damage. Now this trace will allow her ultimate to do that as well. So you have her skill procking off DOT and you also have her ultimate now procking off the DOT as well, which means just more damage all around. Her number two talent is going to be Plunder. When an enemy inflicted with shock is defeated, Kafka regenerates additional energy. This is just really good. This is going to help her out a lot getting her ultimate back up. And this is just going to come in clutch and maybe could potentially uh, let you run an energy regen rope. Don't know on that one yet. But th this could potentially let that happen, which is nice. And then finally, Thorns, which I think is going to be the biggest one for the points we're going to make later in the video. The base chance for ultimate technique or follow-up attack triggered by the talent to inflict shock is increased. This is just really big, guys. Like I said, we'll talk more about this at the end of the video, but this is just going to be really big for her kit. All right, guys, talking about her Light Cone and Light Cone banner now. Now, as far as what's on the Light Cone banner, we're getting uh, the Birth of Self with this Herta's Light Cone. We're also going to be getting uh, the Pearls of Sweat, which is Luca's Light Cone. And then we're finally getting Eyes of Prey, which is Sampo's Light Cone. And then, of course, we're getting Kafka's 5-star Light Cone as well. Let's talk about the 4-stars really quick first. Uh, the 4-stars are pretty decent. Um, I don't understand why the Birth of Self is on here, because it really only affects follow-up attack damage, which... I guess you could use on Kafka. I don't know how much benefit you would get from that. You're not really getting anything from Serval. You're not really getting anything from Luca with this. Uh, I genuinely don't know what this is being used for. If I'm going to be completely honest, um, I, I I don't know why this is on here. I don't. Th I think this is by far the worst one on here for the characters that are given on the actual five star banner. Something like this can be used on Herta, which we all get for free. You could probably also use this on Jing Yuan as well if you have a Jing Yuan and you don't have anything else. I mean, you could use this, the extra fall up attack damage. That's where his main source of damage comes from. So maybe on him, I don't know. Definitely not the best in slot though, for sure. Pearls of Sweat, really, really good. It basically has a chance to ensnare the enemies, which means they can't move, which in turn could potentially give Kafka more turns to use her abilities, which means you'll be procking off more and more DOT on the enemies. Also, this is going to be decreasing their defense by a certain percentage too, which means they take more dot damage as well. Uh, so yeah, I think Pearls of Sweat is just really, really good. And then finally, Eyes of Prey. This is Sampo's uh, signature light cone, basically. This right here is going to be increasing the effect hit rate and increasing the applied dot by 24% at an S1. Really good. I mean, you can't really go wrong with this if you get either of these two light cones on the banner. Pretty decent. And then finally, let's go ahead and talk about Patience is All You Need, which is Kafka's signature light cone. It's going to be increasing the damage dealt by the wearer by 24%. After the attack is unleashed, the wearer speed is increased by 4.8% and spacking up to three times. And then if you hit an enemy that's not eroded, uh, they'll become eroded, which basically erosion is uh, a lightning DOT at 60% uh, of the user's attack. So, I mean... It can help as far as getting her damage output, but this does tell us kind of how she needs to be built. Obviously, damage dealt is really, really big. This means you can use Good Night Sleep well on her because that also increases her damage dealt. Uh, the speed as well, you want to make her as fast as possible. We'll talk more about that though next when we talk about some misconceptions that people have on her. And then finally, just adding the Erode, which is an extra dot effect, which amplifies her damage even more. But yeah, that's all that I really want to talk about in these. I think the Light Cone Banner is pretty good. I I think it's pretty decent. I think the only one that you wouldn't really miss not getting would be Birth of Self. I think if you get this, it's kind of troll. Uh, that's just my opinion on it. Let me know what your, the guys' thoughts are on that in the comments below. But yeah, I just think the Herta Light Cone is just kind of troll. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about Kafka herself. There's some pretty huge mistakes and misconceptions that I see happening when people are building Kafka. That coming from my comment section and when I'm live on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash you can't see me just about every single day. 
the problems that I see here is their building are kind of wrong. Um, they're building more into effect hit right, whereas you don't really need effect hit right into her. I think that shows from the traces of increasing her base chances. Obviously, we don't know what the exact base chances are, um, but with that trace being in effect, I think that can tell you that you don't really need to build any effect hit rate. On top of that, like the other inhality characters that we have, uh, there is effect hit rate built into their small nodes as well. So I think a major trace saying that there is going to be additional effect hit rate in there means you really don't need to build it. I also see people wanting to run like full attack on everything, like attack boots, uh, attack chest, uh, attack here, attack here to amplify the, I guess, DOT that Kafka does as much as possible. When I don't think you, you really need to do that. Um, I think that for Kafka, you do want speed boots. You want her to be as fast as possible. I think, you know, from her light cone, you, you want her to be fast as possible. You want her to be going as fast as possible, to be proccing off her skill as much as possible, which means you're amplifying the DOT as much as possible. You really want as much speed as you can get in Kafka. That means more skills you can activate. That means more ultimates you can get and just everything like that. It also increases the amount of follow-up attacks you'll have because the faster she is, the more turns you get with her, the more follow-up attacks you technically would get with her as well. Now, as far as the chest plate goes, I don't think you necessarily have to run attack. Me, personally, I just haven't got a crit rate or crit damage body piece here, but I do think that you could build Kafka as a crit rate or crit damage unit. I, the reason I think this is because you don't have to really build any effect hit rate into her at all. You really don't have to. That's that's the main thing that I think holds back a lot of these inhility characters is you have to build so much effect hit rate into them for them to actually hit. But I think her base chance is just going to be so high that you really don't need this at all. You really only need 10% effect hit rate if you want to hit absolutely every enemy in the game. And when I say every enemy in the game, the only two enemies you really can't hit with it are the Ebony Deer and also the Kokolia boss fight. If, I mean, if you if you're really stressing out about it, then Sure, build 10% effect hit rate into your kit, then you'll be guaranteed to hit absolutely everything. Uh, if you don't, then you can hit everything except for those two mobs. But I really do think a crit uh, build for Kafka could, could be viable. Now, I'm not saying just to put a crit rate, crit damage body on her and call today, because you actually need to build it out like an actual crit character would need to be built out. Um, you know, you want crit rate, crit damage, you, you want all that. Like, it, it gives, this is an option you can run. I'm not saying you have to run it. I personally think that the attack percentage would fit better in most builds than the crit rate, crit damage one. But if you just like seeing big numbers, uh, from her skill and ultimate, then you got that. Because crit rate and crit damage does not scale into DOT damage. It's not going to scale into that. It's only going to scale off of her skill damage that she's doing before she procs the DOTs and also the ultimate damage she's doing before she procs the DOTs. And also, I guess, the follow-up attack from the talent as well. Like I said, though, I do think that the attack percentage is a bit more consistent. As far as the spear goes, I don't know why people are thinking to run attack spear. I really don't think you need attack spear. Just run lightning damage boost. I saw a couple people saying, uh, yeah, I'm just going to run attack spear. And, and no, don't do not do that. Just run uh, that lightning damage boost spear. You can go for an attack substat here. It'll be fine. Come on. And then for your rope, I probably would just go for an attack percentage rope. Now, we don't know what exactly the energy region is going to be on her or how much the trace is going to give her back as far as energy goes. So you could potentially maybe run an energy region rope here to get the ultimate off faster. But I really don't know the rotations on that. And we're not going to know until she actually comes out into the game. So when I actually make my build guide on Kafka, you'll see that. Anyways, guys, that's really going to do it for today's video. This is already gone on for way too long, I feel like. And uh, make sure you check out the video we post later today on why not to summon for Kafka. Uh, so yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you in the next one. Later. Bye-bye.